Hello. This is the last lecture in our discussions of monitors. In this lecture, which is going to be very short, we will explain to you how to program monitors in Thermantor. Now, first of all, let me remind you, Thermator does not support empty priority weight and uh, broadcast or signal or. In fact, the original version of Thermator has them all. But to make sure you know all the basics, we disabled all of these three extensions in hope of that you are going to use signal and uh, weight properly. Furthermore, not all systems support empty priority weight in the broadcast. And this is the reason we disabled these three extensions in the current version of Thremander. In Thremander, a monitor is just a class. So here we defined a monitor called MyMount. Uh, inherit every public components from the base class monitor. So this means Thremander has a class monitor. For you to inherit all of these public components into your own class. Here, your own class is named as my mom. And uh, always remember, monitor, any monitor does not have any public variables. They can only have public procedures. So in the public part, we have a constructor and some other monitor procedures. All variables or some procedures that can only be used inside a monitor must be declared in the private part. So remember this, a monitor should not have any public variables. How do we write monitor procedure? It's the same as writing a class member function. So I have a class, my mom defined on the previous slides. And uh, this is a monitor procedure. The first statement to be executed is must be a call to monitor begin. The last statement before you exit a monitor procedure must be monitor end. In some sense, if your call to monitor begin is successful, then you have the mutex or the mutual exclusion protection of the monitor. Then you can do whatever things in this monitor. Upon exit, the last statement you should execute is monitor end, with which you released the mutex. Not only because we the monitor begin and the monitor end represents you enter and you exit the monitor, but also we have a visualization that supports monitor. So monitor begin also tells the visualization system that now I want to enter the monitor, although I may not be able to enter the monitor immediately, but visualization system, you know it, I am about to enter. Once I can return from monitor begin, then the monitor begin method would tell the visualization that this thread will enter 
the monitor. By the same reason, when you call monitor in, it means you're going to leave the monitor. That is, release the monitor lock. At the same time, you tell the visualization system that I'm done with the, this monitor procedure. So you do everything between monitor begin and the monitor end. You must have monitor begin as the first stream to be executed when you get into the monitor. And the monitor end is the last statement you executed in, inside a mon monitor before exit. Therefore, this is a wrong way to write something. Here, successfully, we have monitor begin. Do not have any statement before monitor begin. And then we do something here. We return zero. Why is it wrong? I'm sure if you remember what I said here, you know it, but don't worry. Let me tell you why. If you execute return zero, the control goes here, you get the monitor. And you have the button representing the monitor. And then you return. So, the control goes back to the caller immediately. In other words, the caller does not call monitor in to release the button. So even though you returned here, you still have the button. Nobody can enter the monitor. Therefore, as we mentioned uh, at the beginning of uh, monitor, Lecture one, never return something to the caller because the caller would get some value. This value may be computed inside a monitor. By the time you get this value outside of the monitor, the value could have been changed by some other threat. And secondly, you know when the execution reaches this right Curry parentheses, it represents the end of execution of the monitor. So if here you call monitor n without this return, essentially you leave the monitor properly. So never return anything to the caller one. And two, always execute monitor n as the last stream before you exit. Here is a very simple example. We discussed it at the beginning of lecture one. I have a class count, which is a derived class of the monitor class. We have three public procedure. You know, this one is a constructor. Inc, increase the counter by one. Dec, decrease the counter by one. And we have a private counter. Here, this is the constructor. From the syntax, you know, this is a constructor. The constructor simply set the counter to zero. So for the monitor procedure, the ink pro procedure is a member function of count. So first thing first, we call monitor begin to lock the monitor at the same time tells the visualization system that I am trying to enter the monitor. And if you are successful leaving monitor begin, the procedure monitor begin will inform the visualization system that you are in the monitor. Then we add one to the counter and call monitor n, indicating I'm done with the, this monitor procedure ink. Now we return a value. As I mentioned to you, no matter where you return this value, it's a risky proxy, risky uh, process. If you do it here, you still have the button representing the uh, mutual exclusion of the monitor. You are in big trouble. If you return it here, by the time 
the caller to ink receive the return value. The value has already been changed. Right. Same reason, don't return anything here. Process whatever you want to do inside the monitor rather than returning something to the outside because you, there's no guarantee that the, when the value is returned to the outside, the value inside the monitor and the value outside of the monitor would agree. So always keep this in mind. Condition variables. In Fragmenter, there is a class called condition. So you simply declare the condition variable by using condition event. This is a, event is a condition variable. You can wait on this condition variable and the signal this condition variable. Of course, you could always use pointer by new a condition event. In that case, you change here to reference rather than dot. So let's write the uh, philosopher monitor. Remember, in lecture two, we discussed a monitor version of the Dijkstra original sem semaphore version of the dining philosopher's uh, problem. Dijkstra suggested that a philosopher can eat if and only if he is able to get both chopsticks. So here we follow it. We define a class mount as a derived class of the base class monitor. We have a get procedure for a philosopher to call in order to get both chopsticks. A put procedure for a philosopher to put down both chopsticks among is the uh, constructor. We have five, we have an array of five elements. This array is a condition variable and we have a state, remember that is thinking, hungry and uh, eating. And we have a can eat function because this can eat function is placed in the private section. Only, it can only be used when you are in a monitor. So the constructor simply said, every philosopher stays to thinking in the short. Now, the can eat function goes as follows. Can eat function takes an integer. This integer is a number of a philosopher. So the meaning of can eat with an argument k means determining, determining whether philosopher k can eat. Philosopher k can eat if and only if philosopher k is hungry and his left neighbor and his right neighbor are not eating. So this big if statement simply performs the same thing. Philosopher K is hungry and his left neighbor is not eating, his right neighbor is not eating. In that case, philosopher K can eat. Therefore, we set the state of philosopher K to eating and signal philosopher K. So this is the can eat function. Now for the get function, it's pretty simple. Always remember monitor begin, monitor end. Without these two function calls, your monitor procedure is not only uh, incomplete, but incorrect because you do not have mutual exclusion. So Philosopher K wants to get both chopsticks. So lock the monitor up. 
set himself to hunger and check to see whether philosopher K can eat. Philosopher K is his soul. Can I eat? After returning from can eat function, check to see whether my state is not eating. If my state is not eating, it means I cannot eat. Therefore, I wait on self K, the conclusion variable self. When I will be released later, I call monitor in to exit the monitor. Now, if you have noticed that, whether you have noticed that we use uppercase signal and uppercase wait here. Now, finally, I'm sure you can do the same for the put function. Finally, it's very interesting for you to test whether your monitor solution works for the whole type or the patient type. Fortunately, Threadmender supports both. Look at here. If you declare a monitor my monitor, it has a constructor. So here you give it a name. The base class monitor actually is polymorphic. It could take one argument or two arguments. The first argument is a string. I strongly encourage you to give a monitor a name so that in visualization, you are able to see which monitor is doing what if you have more than one monitor. So when you call the constructor with a monitor name, a monitor name, this name will be used to initialize the name of your monitor. Now the second argument, by default is for H-O-A-R-E. -E. But if you replace HOR by MESA, Threadmender will execute your uh, monitor as a MESA type. So you could set HOR in the MESA. You could compile your program under horn and uh, execute it to see what happened. And then you recompile your program by replacing horn with Mesa and run again to see what would happen if you run a whole type monitor with a Mesa type monitor or, and vice versa. In other words, you could write a monitor to be with the MESA type in mind, but then you run it and then you come, you change MESA to whore and convert it and run it again to see what would happen. So this is a very handy uh, feature. So keep this in mind, always assign a name to a monitor so that you will know which monitor is doing what. And then specify your monitor as a whole type because in throughout the whole class, we only use the whole type monitor. Then you do other initialization here. Now, because the syntax we used under Fragmentor is exactly the same we used for the lecture. So you can easily convert uh, all the example programs to a thread mentor program. Furthermore, the thread mentor tutorial page contains more examples. Strongly encourage you to download and test them out. So this is the end of our monitor discussion. I hope you like it. The next lecture, which is a bit longer, is a demo of the visualization capability of Tremendor. I hope you will like it. So let me stop here and good luck and goodbye.